Afternoon, everybody. Hi there. Time for us to talk, but first, you ready? Everybody say hi. Everybody say hi. Okay, I did that for two reasons. One, because of course nothing actually is real until there's a selfie about it in the adolescent world. And two, I did that yesterday with the returning students to tell them that never again will a cell phone, a, a smartphone be in this building. So please reinforce that message with your children. Welcome. Welcome to your new community. Welcome to a new school year. And welcome to this new chapter in your child's school life. We couldn't be happier to see you. We hope the morning has gone smoothly. Uh, those of you who brought umbrellas and raincoats and have kept them out, thank you. Uh, it's held off. My wife, Linda, who's standing in the back, and I uh, have three sons, and we are the veterans of 12 boarding school drop-offs. The first, of course, was the most memorable in the fall of 97, uh, when we were bringing our old, I think I was, Linda was with our two younger sons, bringing our uh, oldest son to boarding school. And after uh, he got settled, and then we heard from the headmaster, I was standing at the reception, sort of looking at my feet, wondering what to do when a former colleague uh, walked up to me and said, remember what John Rattay, who was our boss at the time, used to say, well, actually it was our boss previously, used to say to parents. I said, I didn't respond, and she said, just leave. <laughs> you will leave soon enough. But before you do, my colleagues and I want to offer some words of welcome and reassurance. First, remember that adolescence is a time when children are supposed to grow away from their parents to become productive and responsible adults. You will hear this from me repeatedly in your, time, in your children's time here. Frankly, I don't care about college. That's going to take care of itself. It's the easiest thing we do. I care about who your children are going to be when they're 35. That's our task. Now, it sounds poetic until we, faculty and parents, think of these things. So first, at 10, if you have a son, we see the sweet, loving, compliant boy who sits on your lap and says, I love you. At 15, he becomes hairy, <laughs> smelly, grouchy, and he responds to your farewell of, have a good time, with, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> if you're anything less like Linda and I were, parents need help in raising teenagers to be responsible, productive adults. And that's what you're gaining here at Millbrook School. So think of this as a moment when you gain a community of adults whose specialty, whose expertise is adolescence. And remember two qualities which above all make Millbrook, Millbrook. First, that every student here is known. The plan is that by next Friday, I will know the name of every student in the school, even with our record enrollment. And every student is needed. Every student plays a meaningful role in the life of the school. They will have to make Millbrook work. The result of that is we bring the collective wisdom of all of our adults to bear on your children's growth and success. It can't happen in schools larger than this. And then remember our mission. We're educating each student to make a life rather than just earn a living, though that is absolutely necessary. There's a larger goal here. And my colleagues and I inspire to instill in each and every student these five values. Respect, integrity, stewardship, service, and curiosity. That's the bedrock of everything that we're doing here. So if you can't remember any of that, remember these two images. 
The first is a triangle. This is the relationship you're now entering into with us. You're at one corner, the school is at the other corner, and the school, first and foremost, is going to be represented by your child's advisor. So you're here, we're there, and your child is at the point. It is my experience that most adolescents who I have known try to do that. Collapse the triangle, and everything we hear about you is filtered through them. And everything we hear, you hear about us is filtered through them. This is not a good thing. Our goal, our goal, our collective goal, is to keep the triangle open. So if you hear something that makes you scratch your head, call us. We'll talk about it. Remember, there is no such thing as adolescent logic. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> And when in doubt, when you don't know who to be in touch with, dcassertano at millbrook.org. Okay, easy. Find me and I will let you know who you should be in touch with and we can have a good conversation. The second image, so the first image is an open triangle, an open triangle with information flowing back and forth and good communication. Got it? Do any of you have the experience of teenagers flattening a triangle and trying to tell you what to think and what makes sense? Okay. Second is a braided rope, a three-stranded rope. Right Now, at this point, it's you and your child. Have you ever tried to braid a two-stranded rope? It doesn't work. It falls apart. You can't do it. Again, you've got a third strand now, us. And we all know that when you take those three strands and put them together, you get something much stronger than the single strand. Again, we are in this together, and we are the braided rope. And so, I want to finish with a quote from a very good friend, a man named Fred Calder, who was uh, the head of two schools, uh, Town School in New York City, and then Germantown Friends School in Philadelphia. And then after that, for 20 years, he was the executive director of the New York Association of Independent Schools. And he's both a very good friend of Linda's and mine and of Millbrook Schools, and we're, we're honored about that. Some time ago, he wrote this. It is no secret that motivation in children grows in an atmosphere of intimacy with committed adults who believe in their mission and numbers small enough so that each child is understood and recognized as a worthy human being. That is exactly who we are and that is exactly where your children are. Thank you very much.